right, here we still have a carbon-hydrogen bond, so we could oxidize it to the carboxylic acid. Here we don't, so we stop with this. Um, so uh, now with these reagents, we get a ketone. What, what would we have gotten if we had used PCC and CH2Cl2? The same reaction. The same thing. So when you, uh, uh, when you start in this case, it doesn't matter whether you use this. So this is a case where you could use either. It's still safe as just to always use PCC. Since PCC always gives us what we probably want, you can just stick with that. Yeah. But you need to know what's going to happen if they show it to you uh, on the test. Now, since we started with an alcohol in both cases, why did we get different results? Well, was this primary, secondary, or tertiary? And this one was um, secondary. the alcohol carbon here is attached to two carbon chains. This is secondary. So you can see, here's where it's helpful not just to name the functional group, but to say whether it's primary, secondary, or tertiary. Do we have to worry about primary alcohols oxidizing twice? Yes, because a primary alcohol starts with two CH bonds. Yeah. But do we have to worry about a secondary alcohol oxidizing twice? No, it can only oxidize once because it only has one CH bond. And remember, we can't even oxidize a tertiary alcohol at all, because a tertiary alcohol would have no CH bonds. So uh, it, it, it couldn't even do the first step. Uh, OK, so that's good um, to know uh, over there. So uh, taking a look at the handout again. So notice here, if you use PCC here, you get here. Um, but if you use water, it over-oxidizes to here, because there's tons of CH bonds. Uh, same deal if you start with the pr uh, primary alcohol. PCC oxidizes once, but notice the double arrows here. First we get to here, and then we get to here, because uh, again, we have, uh, there's still a CH bond that we can break. But when we have the secondary alcohol, once we get to the ketone, um, there aren't going to be any more CH bonds. In the ketone, the carbonyl carbon has no CH bonds, so it can't be oxidized the second time. So here we could use PCC or the potassium dichromate, and you can see another reagent is chromium trioxide. Mm -hmm. um, both of those have to be used in water. Um, so you could use any of them here, and the tertiary alcohol can't be uh, oxidized uh, at all. So now we've really covered all the different oxidation uh, reactions here. There's also reduction reactions where you go the other way, uh, using Grignards and hydride reagents. But we've talked about all the oxidizing reagents that uh, take you from left to right over here. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. Any questions? No. Okay. Um, I think it'll, I think it's synthesis, like, I don't know what kind of synthesis are actually, but I think I should do more of those. Okay, sounds good. Well, um, the key to doing well on synthesis is knowing the basic reactions. So if we go through the synthesis and we discover that you're weak on a reaction, we'll have to take a detour and go through that. Uh, but uh, maybe we can start by trying to go over some synthesis. So let's show the mechanism and the product here. So let's review that. Well, you remember the first step, so that was good. So we started, what's the name of this type of reagent? 
Yeah, here's our Grignard reagent. Well, last time we met, we talked about a step-by-step -step process for dealing with Grignards. I remembered the first step or two, and then he got stuck, so let's go through the steps. The first step is to erase the covalent bond and replace it as an ionic bond. So you did that correctly. And then the next step is to ask, who is the reactive atom? The carbon. Yeah, the carbon with the negative charge, because it has the charge. And then the next step is to ask, anytime you find a reactive atom, you should ask if it should be at the head or the tail of an arrow. So I'll draw on that tail. And now the only question is, who goes at the head? We talked last time about how it's very useful to draw in just half of an arrow. So I'll draw in half of the arrow. Uh, will you tell me any guesses who might be reasonable to put at the head of this arrow? Um, I was thinking the carbon. And any particular reason why that would be reasonable? Why is it reasonable for, the car for this carbon to be at the tail of an arrow? Because it's negative. Yeah. Negative things like to be at the tails of arrows. All right. Um, I think you were thinking this carbon might be at the head. Why well, agree? Why is it reasonable for this carbon to be uh, an electrophile at the head of an arrow? Because um, the oxygen is taking the electron and puts electron negative, and there's two bonds with it. Good. So it's delta positive. That's right. The key idea is that this is a delta positive carbon. And the reason is that the reason that you gave, the oxygen is stealing the electrons. But the key is always to try to focus on the charges. So this carbon is acting like an electrophile. Well, wh what's an electrophile? We've seen that an electrophile is a carbon with a full or partial positive charge. So once we figure out what the tail of the arrow is, we should look for a carbon with a full or partial positive charge. Uh, well, here we have the carbon with a full or partial positive charge. Uh, so there we go. Um, all right. That point, or are you stuck? So you numbered good. Okay, it worked it out. Uh, notice that it was kind of hard and it took you a while, uh, but that's natural. It takes time. We saw last time that the key is just to take your time and do this very step by step. Um, so the numbering there uh, really helps. Um, for me, oh, so let's see, what you call this? One, two, and three, like this? One on the right? Or? Yeah, one on the right. All right, for me, the easiest way to do this is to start at the tail of the arrow. So this is the compound at the tail. So I'm just going to redraw that compound at the tail. One, two, three. All right, and now I ask, who's the number two connected to? Well, I can see the number two is going to be connected to the number six. So I put in the number six. Then I ask, who's the number six going to be connected to? Well, we can see the number six is connected to a hydrogen. Oh. Now, it looks like we left one important thing out. Uh, we left out the other electron pushing arrow in that picture, right? So since this carbon already has a full octet, it can't be gaining electrons from the Grignard unless it's also losing electrons to the oxygen over here. All right, and now we can see that the number six carbon has a, ends up with a single bond to the oxygen. So we show that it's a single bond. And who else is the number six attached to? The number five. And here's the number five attached to the number four. Okay, and then we do the charges. At the initial tail, this carbon started negative and it's losing electrons, so it ends up neutral. And at the final head, this oxygen started neutral and it's gaining electrons, so it ends up negative. And we should show the counter ion balancing that charge. 
the counter ion is not balancing the number two carbon anymore because that lost its charge. So it moves over here. Okay, um, now my picture looks different than yours, but they're both right. Uh, there's many different ways you could orient this. But for me, the most reliable thing is to start at the tail and then work step by step from there. Um, okay, so uh, we ended up uh, with that. Uh, so the numbers really helped us here. And uh, are we done or is there another step? Yes, let's draw that.